Well, hello there, and welcome to training. This morning, I was really happy to get an email from GitHub saying, hey, you've been greenlit or invited into the public preview program for GitHub Copilot extensions. And of course, because I'm a teacher, here I am showing you how it is. A GitHub Copilot extension is a way to extend the functionality of GitHub Copilot. Now, I'm going to get right into it here. The question here is, what are these extensions? What's the terminology? And most important, how do you actually get to use it? Well, now it's in preview, so you have to get invited into the program. And in the YouTube description, I linked you to the GitHub blog post where I got on the list. So hopefully you can get on the list and get approved. I also wanted to start, as you can see here, in the GitHub docs, the GitHub Copilot docs specifically, because we have this section now called Build Copilot Extensions. And if we look at this Setup Copilot Extensions article, there's some important vocabulary here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Let's go to About Copilot Agents. I found a really nice definition that rolled it all together. You know that when you're chatting with GitHub Copilot, you're dealing with an off-the-shelf LLM, right? The GPT. The idea with agents here is that we can make a nested call. We can have GitHub Copilot send a nested call to another LLM. Actually, it goes beyond that. You can create these, what are called agents. The agent is the actual at reference that you're going to communicate with in Copilot chat. And here it says, Copilot agents are the core, the custom tools that are embedded in the unit of packaging, which is the extension. And then here's the last thing I want you to know about that. In order to use a Copilot agent in Copilot chat, it must be associated with a GitHub at. So there's a lot of docs in here on how to build your own extension. So you might have a fine-tuned LLM, and it doesn't even have to be an OpenAI LLM now because GitHub Models is another thing that we need to talk about sooner rather than later. But if you're going to do your own agent, you wind up deploying it as a GitHub app. So the agent is the actual chat partner or chat participant. The Copilot extension is the API, and then you create your extension project and publish it through GitHub apps. And if you don't know, let me switch over to github.com slash marketplace. This is where you can get to Copilot extensions, LLM models, apps, and actions as well. All different ways to extend the very robust and capable GitHub API. Now here we are, Copilot extensions. There's not a big list as of this recording. What date is it? September 16th, 2024. What you do, assuming you have proper privilege in your organization slash enterprise, is that you find an extension that does what you need. For example, let's say that you're working, I actually have a project over here, it's a basic Node.js web application. I'd like to dockerize it, common use case. For that, with AI, you probably agree with me, you're going to use some kind of fine-tuned LLM that's really smart on Docker. Docker itself has fine-tuned this. They've created this project. And if you've worked with GitHub Marketplace, all of these projects are in GitHub themselves. I mean, it's a big deal. Now, there's a lot to this. As you can see, you go through an ad workflow, you choose your organization, and then says install for free. Eventually, I'm sure we're going to see a marketplace. There's no monetization yet, but eventually I'm sure we'll see free trials and that kind of stuff. So at the org enterprise level, you would install these apps and that's how you would manage them in GitHub. Let me get over to one of my browsers here. In GitHub, the organization settings, you can come down and look at your integrations, your GitHub apps. And as you can see, I've installed the Docker GitHub app. You probably want to know, well, once you've installed the agent, can everybody use it? Yeah, as long as they have privilege to use GitHub Copilot in that context, in that org, in, the, in that repo. And even if you have the ability to do Copilot chat and GitHub like you have right here, normally you're going to choose a repo and it's been indexed or not. And then notice we can at reference any of our installed GitHub Copilot extensions. So I can ask... Now, in this case, I'm chatting about my chat GPT class. I might say, are there any apps in here that would be good candidates for Docker images? Now, in this case, the Docker agent came back and I'm surprised it didn't give me more advice here. Now, we may be seeing the system prompt. When you create your own 
GitHub Copilot extensions, you have to understand that customers are going to be making calls against the LLM, and you got to think about rate limiting and preventing abuse. And you also want to think about strong system prompts to protect against abuse. So I'm just trying to explain why it didn't help here. Let's go over to the IDE and see if we have better luck. We could always ask general purpose questions. Here in VS Code, you might have to quit and, and reload the application, but I found I didn't have to reboot my computer. And now when I invoke at in the chat, notice I have Docker. And again, this is going to be the way the trend goes on. Eventually, you're going to be able to at reference your own completely customized and fine-tuned models this way. So I can say at Docker, just in general, please make a teaching example of a multi-stage Docker image. And again, that particular chat participant is answering the call. It's function calling, where GitHub Copilot is the parent, and then the child request is going into Docker and now coming back from Docker, just like our normal workflow is. But like I was saying, the real magic is not so much using those agents, those GitHub Copilot extensions, just as a Q&A, although they're great for that. They're supposed to be great to help you work on your code. So, I mean, I'm in a workspace here, so why don't I try an at workspace at Docker? Can I stack them both? Nah, it didn't let me do that. So let me try and at Docker again and say, help me to containerize my node application. Again, I'm just testing this right now. Let's see what happens. I see you have a question. I can help with that. And I'm not able currently to invoke two chat participants at once. So I'm not sure what I'm uncovering here, if anything. That's not exactly what I wanted. No, I'm, so I'm not really sure. I guess we could bring a file into scope. I could bring out this pipeline file, letting me invoke at. Now, again, this could be a bug or it could be just my system. I'm not sure what is going on here. Let me try that one more time. Let me just do a control I and at isn't getting me where I need to go. Slash commands are working. Final thing I'll try is I'll come back to chat and I'll try a pound fi and I will pin this YAML file. And now let me see, nope, I can't combine the attach with the at. What if I try to put the at at the very beginning? Let's see if that helps. Hey, hey, think we might be cooking with gas here. So let's see, how do I dockerize this deployment? Let's see, I see you have a question, I can help. It's interesting to me as always because with tech moving this fast, when you do a demo, sometimes it's the minority of times that you get a really clean result. But there you have it. I hope that you're smarter than you were 10 minutes ago about GitHub Copilot extensions. Take good care.